22nd, it's about 1.40 in the afternoon. We don't have a quorum yet. We're gonna start as a subcommittee. Um, I'm not seeing any authors. What I may do is I'll start with some of my bills and I'll, are you gonna, yeah, I'll turn the gavel over to, well, she's leaving right now, to Senator Wolk. And then what I'll do, as soon as I see a member, then I'll stop, because I traditionally present my bills at the end, but so we can save some time, I'll go ahead and get started. All right, we're going to start with uh, Senate Bill 26. We're convened as a committee. Senator Hernandez, please begin. Thank you, Madam uh, Chair and members. Um, for years, I've always stressed the importance of transparency in the healthcare marketplace because it helps consumers make uh, better decisions about their care and also re will reduce cost. Uh, healthcare purchasers, both employers and individual purchasers, recognize that consumers need information about price and quality. But in today's marketplace, consumers and purchasers don't have enough information to make educated decisions on their health care. So this bill establishes the California Healthcare Cost and Quality Database. This database will make cost and quality information available so that healthcare providers are encouraged to deliver care that is effective, patient-centered, and affordable. It will also put this information into the hands of consumers so that they understand their financial liability and can make informed decisions about health care coverage and care, which is due to them. Over this past year, I've worked with a broad coalition of stakeholders to craft a bill that is meaningful and that can actually be implemented given the diverse interests across payers, providers, and consumers. We have more work to do, and with uh, such a large endeavor, I will take time, but I'm confident that we will move forward and get this thing uh, done. Goal of the bill, along with several other bills I'm authoring this year, is to empower consumers and purchasers with the information necessary for them to obtain quality health care at a reasonable price. And with that, members, I respectfully ask for an I vote. I do have witnesses that like to speak in support of the bill, All uh, right. Madam Chair. Thank you. Let's hear from your and witnesses. We will be taking amendments. All right. There will be amendments. Uh, and uh, I don't see any opposition unless... No, I see no opposition. So with that in mind, welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Beth Capella on behalf of Health Access California. SB 26 takes a step beyond, uh, creates a cost and quality database that will also allow us at the same time to look at the social determinants of health and health equity. It is really important in looking at the quadruple aim that we focus not on, on lowering cost, improving health care, improving the health care system, and reducing health disparities. This bill goes beyond what many other states have done by adding in the reduction of health disparities and by also including health care that is capitated, which is such an important part of the California market. We will look forward to working with the authors. The bill moves forward to assure that the governance accurately reflects the interests of consumers, and we ask for your I vote today. All right, further, further support? Carrie Sanders with the California Pan-Ethnic Health Network, um, also strongly um, supportive of this bill. Want to thank the author and the author, uh, and uh, Senator Hernandez's staff for their leadership on this critical issue. Um, like Health Access, CPEN is also um, su support with amendments to to ensure that health equity and the social determinants of health are uh, a part of the the database. Um, communities of color in California are disproportionately uninsured. Uh, and have higher rates of poverty and income inequality, which is actually uh, shown to have an even greater impact on health outcomes than health coverage. Um, this database will address these issues, uh, we're very confident, um, and uh, through the ability to stratify data on race, ethnicity, and language, amongst other factors, and also to allow for the mapping of data on mortality and morbidity, which um, will help us to, to uh, target interventions. So we're uh, very strongly in support and urge your I vote. Thank you. All right, further support, welcome. Madam Chair, Member Sarah Flox from the California Labor Federation. I'd first like to thank the author and his staff for working so hard on this bill and including us in the process. Um, we are supportive amended, but we've been working 
in the process and have been heard. This is a very important bill for large purchasers. We need to see the combination of both cost and quality data so that we can make informed purchasing choices. Um, and we look forward to working with the author and his staff as we move forward. And we would urge an I vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Further support? Madam Chair and members, Teresa Stark with Kaiser Permanente. I would echo the comments of my colleague, Ms. Flox, very appreciative of the author's work on this and the process. It is a very complex topic that's going to take a lot of effort, but we're very committed to continue to work with the author on cost and quality together. It's very important. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And support? Thank you, Madam Chair. Senators, Julianne Broyles here on behalf of both the California Association of Health Underwriters and the California Association of Joint Powers Authorities, who are uh, large purchasers of health care. Uh, we do believe that this information will be helpful to them as they look at cost drivers in the future and ask for an I vote. Thank you. Those who are in support now, just identify yourselves, please. And anyone who's, is there a microphone down there? Are no. you standing for this bill? No. In support. Hi, Judy Darnell with United Ways of California, and I'm here today in support of the bill and speaking for the California Children's Health Coalition, uh, including the California Coverage and Health Initiatives, Children Now, and Children's Defense Fund. And we thank the author. Thank you. Further support? Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Gabals with the California Association of Health Plans. And we've submitted some comments that address some technical implementation issues, but we support transparency and are looking forward to working with the author and other supporters regarding this issue. Right. Further support for this bill? Please come forward. There are chairs available. No. Uh, Sean South on behalf of the California Primary Care Association in support. Thank you. Further support? All right. Any opposition? This is to SB 26. Concerns? Yes, of course. Yes, good afternoon. Richard Holliver with the Consumer Federation of California. First, I want to thank the author and the proponents for a very productive dialogue uh, addressing some of our concerns. We do support the very important, worthy goals of the bill, so let me be very clear about that. We, we think some more work is needed around the question of uh, patient medical privacy, and while the bill does address that, it refers to very clearly to federal privacy laws but not to California's stronger privacy laws. And we think some tweaks will take care of that problem, but there are dif differences in uh, the privacy protections under federal versus state law. We think our standard, which has worked in the superior, should apply to this entity, which will have records of tens of millions of Californians. Thank you. All right, thank you. Further concerns or opposition? All right, seeing none, we do not have a quorum, but perhaps when, uh, I know when we do, there'll be a motion, um, the recommendation, I believe, is to pass as amended. Thank you. To um, uh, comment, uh, oh, the, to to judiciary. the amendments will be taken in judiciary, so there is a correction, and uh, just when we get a quorum, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Right, thank you. And I noticed that Senator Stone is here, so I'll go ahead and we'll let him move on next. All right, Senator Stone, come forward. Item number four. Stone, before we get started, I just want to make a couple of announcements. Item number five, SB 203 Monning, the item number nine, SB 346 will not be heard today. Consent items, we have two items in the proposed consent calendar. Item number two, SB 65 Woke, and item number 15, SB 746 Woke. And Senator Hall is not here today. So uh, with that, we are now at item number four, SB 149 Stone, Investigational Drugs, Biological Products or Devices Right to, to Try. Uh, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and honorable committee members. I'm honored to stand before you here today. First off, I would like to take the suggested amendment on the reporting of data to the State Department of Health, of Public Health. SB 149, also known as the Right to Try Act, is a unique bill that would provide hope to terminally ill patients in the state of California. Patients who are terminally ill often have very few options available to them. For terminal patients who have exhausted all conventional treatment options and modalities, obtaining access to life, potentially life-saving investigational drugs is often very difficult. 
For these patients, their only hope for attaining these potentially life-saving drugs is to request that the FDA grant them expanded access. Unfortunately, the process for expanded access is confusing and time-consuming. There is an estimated 100 hours worth of paperwork to fill out with the FDA, and then it may take the FDA up to a month to make a final decision, time that many of these patients don't have. We feel that there's a better way. Under SB 149, a terminally ill patient can request to try an experimental drug that has passed phase one safety trials as a last chance effort to save their life. This can only happen under a specific set of rules. One, the patient has a terminal illness and has exhausted all conventional treatment options. Two, the patient's doctor has advised the use of an investigational drug. Three, the investigational drug has successfully completed basic safety testing. Four, the patient has provided informed consent. And five, the company sponsoring the development of the investigational drug is willing to make it available to the patient. The bill contains important protections for all parties so that the doctor and hospital advising the drug and the pharmaceutical company providing the drug would not be subject to lawsuits. This bill will save lives. With me today is Kurt Altman with the Goldwater Institute who is here to testify in support of the bill and Mike DeBaroli, a firefighter, a hero firefighter from Sacramento who suffers from ALS. I ask for your A vote today. Thank you for the opportunity. Good afternoon. Please um, proceed. State your name. Hi, good afternoon. Um, like Senator Stone said, my name is uh, Thomas Michael DeBartoli. I go by Mike. Um, I'm 53 years old. I'm from Tracy, California. Uh, I've been a firefighter for 26 years. 16 of those years right here in Sacramento. I used to help protect the state capitol, um, worked at Station 1 down on R Street, uh, excuse me, on Q Street, and also Station 2 on J. Um, I'm, I was a member of the Sacramento USAR team that responded to the Twin Towers 9-11, and also Oklahoma City tragedy. About two years ago, I started uh, experiencing symptoms in my left hand uh, while on duty. My fingers started cramping, and they started twitching. I, I thought nothing of it until my doctor said I needed to see a neurologist and get it tested. Uh, I went through uh, many, many blood tests, MRI, CT scan, and EMG. Approximately a year later, I was diagnosed with ALS. Some of the facts about ALS, there's about 30,000 people in the United States that have ALS. About 6,000 die every year, about another 6,000 are re-diagnosed. There's usually just one person in 50,000 that have ALS. ALS is 100% terminal. Lifespan of most patients is three to five years. There's no way to prevent. There's no cause found for ALS. There's no treatment and there's no effective cure. The meds that I do currently take are to help control my depression, Celexa, Clonopin to help me sleep at night. There is one medication that is for ALS that the proponents say that it typically gives you two more months of life on the end of your life. My doctors are very good at Stanford Medical Hospital. Unfortunately, right now, there's not a lot of drugs out there through clinical trials. But it is a lengthy process when a drug does come around to get it tried. Time is of the essence. If my doctor told me today that I could take a rock and eat it every day, that would cure me. I would certainly do it. I used to be able to swing an axe, operate a hose line, use the jaws of life, rescue people from burning buildings. Now I can't. Now I can't even tie my shoes. Zip my, zip my pants, button my shirt, open a bottle of pop, or cut a steak. Currently, my left hand and forearm don't function. They're weak, and my muscles are wasting away. My legs get weaker, right? and eventually I won't be able to walk. I won't be able to walk, and eventually I won't be able to swallow, eat, or breathe. Most patients die of suffocation. I spent 26 years in the fire service. 
answering over 60,000 calls. I went to every call and did my best. I ask you today to answer that call and step up and do what you can to help me and others that suffer from terminal disease. Please help me and my wife and my four kids. Thank you for the time. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking your time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you. Uh, thanks, Senator Stone, uh, for the invita invitation for me to come here and testify. My name is Kurt Altman. I'm the National Policy Advisor and General Counsel at the Goldwater Institute uh, and one of the original drafters of model right to try legislation that is running around the country and is very similar to SB uh, 149 here. Uh, I've had the opportunity uh, to be in about 25 close to 30 states uh, on this very issue and testified before uh, committees just like this. Um, Senator Stone laid out what the bill does, what the protections are, uh, and I'm not gonna go through that again, but obviously as we sit here today, you see um, why a bill like SB 140, 149 is needed. Um, Mr. DiPartoli's uh, story uh, is one of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, even thousands I've heard around the country so what I'm here for today is to ask for your I vote and uh, really to offer myself up uh, for any questions you may have. Uh, this is different. This bill uh, is really cutting edge and I I'm, have the ability and have answered the questions and would be happy to answer the committee questions on the FDA process, why this bill is needed, how it works and what's happening around the country. I will tell you that as of yesterday, uh, 15 states have signed similar bills, right to try bills into law. Uh, there's close to still 20 states currently, 20 state legislatures still currently running similar bills. Um, that's the uh, momentum around the country. And again, members of the committee, I thank you for, for having me and I would be more than happy to answer questions uh, regarding this process. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, further witnesses in support? All right, seeing none. Are there witnesses in opposition? Uh, I see someone getting up. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Amy Durbin on behalf of the California Medical Association. Um, here in opposition to the bill, you know, we, we very much appreciate the good intentions behind it, but we do have significant patient safety concerns with allowing access to unproven drugs outside of the FDA's clinical trials and compassionate use programs. Um, the FDA ensures the safety of using these drugs and provides that proper benefit and risk assessment and offering these unapproved drugs outside of those processes and any type of controlled monitor monitoring we're worried would not only endanger terminally ill patients' lives further, um, but potentially offer, you know, exploiting their hopes and circumstances as they'd be willing to pay or do anything at this point to save their lives. You know, we, we have been engaged on the other right to try bill in the assembly, assembly member Calderon's bill. It has been substantially amended so far through the process to, to involve some more oversight from institutional review boards, which we thought was a great step forward in kind of addressing our patient safety concerns. Um, also took care of some technical concerns we have around the terminal illness definition um, and informed consent process. So, you know, I've been speaking with the, the author staff and, and related, you know, there might be a pathway there for us to, to get our concerns addressed and so happy to, to continue working on that with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Further opposition? Madam Chair, members of the committee, Stephanie Roberson on behalf of the California Nurses Association here in opposition to the bill. Um, I want to first, um, you know, appreciate the testimony by, by the patient. You know, we're all sensitive to these issues and we want to make sure first and foremost, as my colleague with the CMA said, that patient safety is of utmost concern and we pass laws and legislation that um, has patient protection uh, in mind. So. We're definitely sympathetic to your testimony. But unfortunately, uh, members of the bill doesn't resolve the problem. There's nothing in this legislation or in any of the bills on this subject that really gets at the heart of making sure that these drugs are available in advance of FDA approval. There are so many reasons why drug manufacturers don't make their drugs available for compassionate use, um, regulatory administrative issues, what have you, but 
of the 86 of over 32,000 studies enrolling new participants that were available for expanded use, only 86 of those. Um, but there must be industry participation, and manufacturers are not exempted from FDA rules just because states enact legislation, legislation asserting that citizens have the right. It's unfortunate that the bill provides a false sense of hope for patients, and it upsets us to see the root of the problem going unchecked. We also need to be looking at the cost of drugs and challenging manufacturers to change ex excessive prices for all consumers in California. High-priced drugs, specialty drugs, will continue to be a barrier for most patients in California. The bill is also premature. As many of you know, on February 4th, the FDA released new guidance on the expanded use program and streamlining, streamlining excuse me, their efforts to cut down from 100 hours of work that it takes to apply to down to 45 minutes. So that process is still moving forward. I believe that they're in the comment period, so we should at least see that process play out before we implement laws. CNA still believes that there may be a preemption problem here. Um, although states are passing this quickly, the federal preemption issue may very well catch up. So I think there's more work to do. As my colleague from CMA said, that there's another bill in the assembly that puts many patient protections in place. We would like to see that in this vehicle. So for now, we uh, oppose the bill. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? Comments, questions for many of the members? Senator Pan? So uh, first of all, I, I want to thank uh, Senator Stone for, uh, for bringing this issue up. I think that it is, uh, I, I appreciate where you're coming from and, uh, and that uh, when you have people who are, you know, at the, we are talking a lot about uh, toward the end of life here in, in many contexts, uh, but I think that uh, the opportunity to try uh, to, uh, to try a th uh, when there's no other alternative that, that to try to therapy. And I mean, I, th I think by a couple of issues I did want to touch on. So one is, is that certainly the patient safety aspect, clearly these are treatments that have not been thoroughly tested. We don't know whether they work or not. We don't know the safety profile. Um, I recognize that this is only for a very, you know, specific circumstance where really in many ways you could say the patient doesn't have much to to lose in some senses, but I think it is important that there's there has to be some kind of a consent process that so that it's something that they are very clear they understand what they're getting themselves into um, because again you, you don't know what um, uh, you know what side effects or other other because you just don't have the data the, the other the other issue though I also want to bring up uh, more particularly is uh, many times uh, when you're developing therapies. Um, there are many conditions that are fairly rare uh, that you may not have a lot of patients uh, that, uh, uh, and so when you're trying to do a trial to figure out whether this promising therapy may work or not, it got through phase one, but you're in phase two and you need a couple hundred patients, um, it sometimes can be hard to recruit uh, people. And in, in many ways what happens is that we're offering a treatment, we call it a treatment, but we don't know whether it'll do anything or what the, and you don't, what you don't, and, and that what we don't want to do is have that interfere with um, people actually participating in the trial so we actually know whether this is safe, whether it's effective, and the, the, those very important things we want to know so that we can actually, if it turns out it is safe and effective, we want to get it out to the general population as fast as possible. If it isn't, we don't want, you know, so we don't want to have that delayed. Uh, and so I, I guess I just want to mention that, uh, um, and I, we need to also look how this interfaces with the FDA mechanism that apparently is also under discussion too, but to ensure that we don't, that this doesn't interfere with recruitment of people for a trial so we can actually find out defend, more definitively how safe and how effective this is. And so if you have a pathway where someone can actually access the medication and if it's a situation where it's the end of, you know, end of life, you're saying, okay, well, I could go into a trial where I may, it may be double blind, et cetera, so therefore I don't know how to get the medication, or I can just go ahead and then you may have people saying, well, why would I do the trial when I might guarantee I have access? And you may create a situation where you actually hold up the trial because they're having difficulty recruiting because people say, I want to go the other way. So hopefully we can try to address this issue as well. Um, uh, if, uh, if this uh, bill moves forward, uh, and certainly I, I, I presume that uh, you are continuing to work with the opposition to address, and I, again, it's the, pa the, the patient safety and consent issues are certainly extremely important. 
Thank you, uh, Senator. Just if I respond, uh, uh, number four that I mentioned in, in my uh, report, the patient has been provided informed consent, and that will be comprehensive, understanding that there is potential dangers in taking uh, drugs that are not full, fully, fully tested. Um, and I agree with you. There's the, the last thing that I ever want to do is to compromise FDA studies that ultimately may get an approval for a drug that will help millions of people. Uh, not only in California, but uh, certainly certainly nationwide. And I would look forward to working with uh, someone like you, a physician, to make sure we put uh, safeguards in there to make sure that we don't compromise studies. And um, uh, I'm hoping that uh, you know this is a this is a last resort. And we all know that the FDA process is comprehensive and is comprehensive for a reason. Uh, for those of us that have studied medicine and pharmacy, we all know about the Laetrile incident that happened many, many years ago. We don't want to see that duplicated. And so the FDA does a great job of ensuring that drugs are safe for, for consumers to use and that the drugs do what they're in, studied and intended to do. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for people like my friend Mark, Mike, he, he may not have the time to wait for that drug to get through that process that sometimes can take seven to ten years to get to market. And uh, what I don't want to do is uh, condemn them to their ultimate demise without the possibility of having something that may be in the works, that may be beneficial to them, that may cause side effects. Um, but what are their alternatives? There aren't. And so if there is a silver bullet out there that just hasn't made it all the way through the system that can uh, save uh, Mike and, and people that are afflicted with terminal illness, then, you know, yes, I understand they haven't gone through the trials and we haven't been proven them to be safe, um, but these patients are going to lose their lives if we don't have any type of prompt intervention. And I think this is a, uh, a, a, proper, a proper tool to help those afflicted with terminal illness. Thank you. Um, we're going to see if we can establish a quorum, if we can do that. If you can call the members, please. Hernandez? Here. Hernandez here. Wynn? Hall? Mitchell? Monning? Aye. Monning here? Nielsen, here. Nielsen here, Pan, here. Pan here, Roth, Wolk, here. Wolk here. Quorum has been established. I believe Senator Wolk has a comment or question. I do. Just a brief comment. Uh, Senator Stone, I appreciate your bringing this forward, and I look forward to your continuing to work with the opposition, yes. in particular the CMA and the CNA, to see if you can um, uh, come to a good uh, place in terms of oversight. And, um, I think I think that's a I've seen I've watched them be a very positive uh, influence on uh, Senator Monning and I and helpful and I think I would yes. encourage you to follow them. My particular issue that needs to be resolved in judiciary uh, w between our staffs and with the staffs of the committee is that your definition of terminal illness is not the same as ours. So that really does need to be um, fixed. Uh, judiciary is a good place to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that uh, suggestion. Kurt, did you want to respond to that at all? Um, sure. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Mr. Chairman, and, and I'd like to respond to uh, Senator Pan's comments, too, about the concern of clinical trials. Uh, if you look at the language of both SB 149 and, and the, um, I'll call the companion bill, which I know isn't a companion bill running in the Assembly, and many of the bills and laws around the country, that concern has been taken uh, into account, and every protection has been tried to put in that to be eligible under right to try the drug uh, that we're talking about, the investigational new drug, not only has to have passed phase one of the FDA clinical trial testing, but it has to remain under investigation in a clinical trial, so phase two or phase three. Thereby, that's one part of uh, the protection of those clinical trials. If for any reason the drug is no longer in the clinical trial um, because it doesn't have enough patients, which, which was one of your concerns, uh, then it's no longer eligible to be administered under a right to try law. So that was one of the protections. One of the other protections is that this is really designed for the 97 percent of uh, patients afflicted with whatever the condition may be uh, that are ineligible for clinical trials. Only about 3 percent on average uh, uh, qualify because as you know you can't be too sick to be in a trial. You have to be sick enough, have the condition. Um, so it was those protections that uh, were intended in the draft bill and, and appear in most bills, including these ones, uh, that do the best they can to protect those clinical trials. The FDA process and approval process is an integral part of a drug being eligible under these laws. 
Okay, I believe Senator Wolk, did you want to make a restatement? Because I believe you said it was going to go to judicial. There is a correction. It is not going to go to judicial. I was misinformed. Go You're going to BMP? Yes. Yes. BMP. So, so at we'll that fix point, it. we will it take a look at some amendments. So, is there any other comments, questions from any of the members? Um, do we have a motion? Well, oh, comment? Yes, Senator yeah. Pan. Um, so, I guess, you know, I. I think that there's some issues still outstanding, but I appreciate what you're trying to do. So I'm going to be supportive of the bill uh, today. But again, it's my further future support will depend on being able to address uh, many of the issues that I brought up in the opposition. But I appreciate what you're trying to do. And so I'm happy to support the bill today. And Senator Pan, and I appreciate your comments. Uh, again, the last thing that I ever want to do is compromise ongoing clinical trials that ultimately are going to lead to a drug that is the silver bullet to helping a lot of people in this country. That's the last thing I want to do. I want to help the 3% that are really progressed, that uh, really have very little time left uh, to make them candidates. And I'll, I'll work my hardest, even working with you, with, with Kurt, to ensure that we have those protections to ensure, although I think you articulated very well, that if they don't have enough patients to go to phase three or phase four, there's no clinical studies anymore, the patient's not going to get the drug. So. Um, but we'll, we'll make sure that we uh, we address your concerns by all means, and uh, and if I'll just close. Uh, yeah, we do have a motion by Senator Nielsen. By all means, feel free to close. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, the consideration of the committee. I want to help uh, those people that have heard uh, that very unfortunate statement that you only have a limited amount of time to live, and there's no conventional treatments available to save your life. This uh, is going to give hope. But, you know, we certainly don't want to uh, give the impression to those that we are providing these drugs that it is going to be the silver bullet. It is a last attempt uh, with an unproven therapy that has promise to potentially help save your life. And healthcare professionals are all ones that take the Hippocratic Oath. Pharmacists are certainly party to it. Uh, and that Hippocratic Oath says that we're going to do everything we can to help heal and help those people that are sick. And I've taken that oath seriously, as I know many of my healthcare professional colleagues do as well. Uh, this is one last tool uh, to give those that have a terminal illness the possibility of, of living. Um, I may point out that we have tremendous changes in technology today. Uh, you'll note that there's a disease called neuroblastoma. Um, Dr. Pan and Dr. Hernandez know that this tumor doubles in size every single week. It's a terminal illness. And there is a study that was being done using polio virus being injected into these tumors that has had promising results. And what, you know, with people that had this terminal illness, people are surviving. And so with technology today, we never know what uh, silver bullets may come our way, and I hope uh, that we can give promise to those people that have been given no other alternative. Appreciate your I vote. Thank you. Uh, the chair is recommending the I vote. We have item number four, SB 149, Stone Investigators Drug Biological Products. That's uh, going to be uh, due pass to BNP committee. Call the members, please. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Wynn? Hall? Mitchell? Monning, Nielsen, Nielsen I Pan, aye. Pan I Roth, Wolk, Wolk I. Thank you. It currently has four. Um, obviously, there's not enough members here. We'll put that bill in call. Thank you very uh, much. Thanks for why don't we, um, if somebody can move the consent calendar, item number two and mm -hmm. item number fifteen, uh, Wolk, the Wolk consent calendar. If we can call it. I just said the woke consent calendar, and Bev, Bev is, is laughing. <laughs> okay. Um, so moved. Uh, call the members, please. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Wynn. Hall. Mitchell. Monning. Aye. Monning, aye. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, aye. Pan. Aye. Pan, aye. Roth. Wolk. Aye. Wolk, aye. Aye. Currently has five. We're going to place that, uh, those bills on call. I think I saw Senator, oh, there, Senator Laura. Uh, 